Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic in conservative dentistry is air abrasion. So air abrasion is a concept of cavity preparation which involves minimal tooth removal that is minimally invasive dentistry. So the old pattern is uh, basically for amalgam where it requires a large amount of tooth removal for the restoration but this requires very minimal amount so that the tooth hasn't uh, got a big damage to receive a restoration so the prognosis will be good and the tooth and the restoration will sustain for a longer period without any uh, disadvantage of the cavity preparation so let's see what is exactly air abrasion okay so air abrasion is a great dental advancement over the dental drill as it allows precise removal of decayed teeth without the use of local anesthetic. So we don't use local anesthetic all the uh, time but still air abrasion doesn't require any local anesthetic solution, uh, injection or a conventional drill. So it was first introduced by or the concept was first put forward by Dr. J. Rainy in USA. Okay, so it was uh, in 1950s, but this technology is introduced uh, to the dentistry in very later period around 1990s. But still, it was there. The idea was there from 1950s. So air abrasion so what exactly is air abrasion it uses two component one is compressed air so it propels aluminium oxide particle so this is the key element so aluminium oxide particles will be projected to the cavity or where we need a preparation through compressed air and does the job so usually we do cavity preparation by using an air rotor or micro motor so the burst does the job it is cutting so it is very invasive procedure but this is like compressed air and aluminum oxide particles so it will be projected with such a force to be able to cut the tooth structure in a simple terms because it is a precision sand blaster okay so precision sand blaster so this air abrasion system so this is a air and this is what abrasive so we have uh, learned abrasives uh, abrasion we learned the tooth abrasion and the mechanical abrasion and the abrasive particles so something which erodes tooth is known as abrasive okay so here the aluminium oxide through compressed air with such heavy force doing the job but uh, in spite of showing this very promising result, the concept did not gain popularity due to mainly three factors. The first one was it was not able to prepare cavities with well-defined walls and margins. So if this is the tooth and we are going to prepare a cavity like this. Or this okay that is not possible with air abrasion because very precise cavity walls are not obtained by this air abrasion because creation of walls and well-defined margins are not possible so that was the first thing 
which was not uh, first reason which was not uh, very popular among dentists secondly the introduction of the air turbine handpiece in the late 1950s made conventional cavity preparations less time consuming so all these aerotor uh, micromotor all these are introduced into dentistry so it makes the cavity preparation so easy so it was not much accepted because the normal cavity itself can be done in a very short period and thirdly as high velocity suction had not been developed evacuation of the powder was difficult so that time when it was introduced there was no high volume suction or high velocity suction so the evacuation of this powder was difficult at that time so it was not much popular so what are the principles of air abrasion the first one accurate diagnosis of unsound tooth structure and decay then accurate removal of unsound tooth structure with minimal destruction of sound tooth structure then restorative treatment planning based on the probability of longevity of the restorative material so these are the principles so the basic concept of air abrasion device has remained the same it has experienced a rebirth not due to uh, changes in the device itself but due to the improvements in bonding the restorative materials isolation and high volume suction so the basic technique was the same when it was introduced in 1915 that time uh, dentistry did not have uh, bonded uh, restorative material direct bonding restorative material or high velocity suction apparatus so once the dentistry is equipped with all these the same technology came to 2000 or 1990s as air abrasion because the technology was same aluminum oxide through a compressed air but only the equipments were present during the newer times so that the dentistry can afford air abrasion so that is a concept of air abrasion so the compressed air and aluminum oxide particles does the cavity cutting so the basic principle of air abrasion is based on a formula that is kinetic energy that is e is equal to half m v square so m is the mass and v is the velocity okay so the cutting capability of air abrasive is attributable to the energy of mass in motion unlike conventional mechanical methods that depends on friction so the energy depends on the mass in motion so the aluminum particle at a very high velocity increases the energy that is a concept so when the rapidly moving mass strikes its target most of its energy is transferred to that material so if that material is hard the result is removal of small amount of material so that is the concept of air abrasion so that is why the modality is sometimes referred to as kinetic cavity preparation k v p kinetic cavity preparation so air abrasion can be best described as a pseudo mechanical so it can be best described as pseudo mechanical non rotary method okay non rotary method of cutting and removing dental heart tissues it is not a mechanical but it is pseudo mechanical and non rotary method 
so the terms micro air abrasion and kinetic cavity preparation have been used synonymously to describe air abrasion so sometimes the question might come as micro air abrasion so the studies have shown that the bonding of enamel and dentine surfaces prepared with air abrasion is much better than that with the conventional carbide burrs or acid etching so that is the advantage of this air abrasion the bonding of enamel and dentine is a largely improved compared to the conventional one which was done by uh, acid etching or the carbide burrs so with the introduction of flowable and nanofill composites the air abrasion technique has got lots of value in dentistry because it requires very minimal amount of tooth removal and we have the nanofilled materials and flowable materials with proper bonding unlike so the unlike the old conventional amalgam okay so another major concern regarding the powder particle has also been uh, due to the use of isolation in the form of rubber dam and high volume evacuation devices so the number of parameters we need to think about when going for air abrasion that is amount of air pressure particle size quantity of particles passing through the nozzle nozzle diameter of the handpiece angulation of the nozzle of the handpiece distance from the object time of exposure to the object and depth of penetration so the procedure is first we take preoperative radiograph to determine if interproximal caries is present then isolate with rubber dam then use uh, caries uh, detecting dye to know the caries lesion exactly because we are going for a very minimal tooth removal then using air abrasive unit with high volume evacuation placed in the proximity of the tooth prepare cavity then after few seconds the initial preparation examine the preparation for decay reapply the caries detecting dye complete the preparation using the caries detecting dye until all caries is removed then apply the etchant for 20 seconds with water spray disinfect the cavity preparation with chlorhexidine so within 10 seconds apply the dentine bonding agent then place the composite polymerize it then we can use uh, any burrs for initial shaping and the final uh, finishing protocols so that is all about air abrasion okay so the main advantages are it is painless local anesthesia is very rarely needed it works quickly and the tooth with a small lesion is ready to restore in seconds it work quietly without the uh, wine of all two familiar dental handpiece there is no vibration or pressure there is no production of heat to damage the dental pulp and lesser sound tooth structure is removed so it can be used basically in class 1 class 2 3 4 5 cavity preparation sealants and preventive resin restorations repair of composites and porcelain especially the margin of veneers removal of composite and amalgam so all these cases uh, we can use this air abrasion technique so that is all about uh, air abrasion and the pressure regarding the pressure the pressure how much pressure they use generally is 40 to 160 and the recommended levels are 100 to uh, 100 uh, for cutting and 80 for etching so the particle size common particle size is 27 to 50 micrometer that is aluminum particle size so higher particle flow rate will allow more particles to abrade the working surface faster so it depends on the i mean uh, the abrasion depends on the particle size so that is uh, all about 
air abrasion it is commonly uh, asked uh, short note so you can write about the basic procedures and the other final details of air abrasion hope you understood this small concept of air abrasion so air abrasion uh, in a takeaway point it is nothing but the aluminium particles are projected at very high velocity from a compressed air unit so I'll come up with a new topic in conservative industry. Thank you.